Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Welcome back to episode five of Sunday Technical Analysis, where we look over some stocks, we check out the futures, do some charting, and try to find some potential plays into the coming week. The futures open up in just about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna wait until they open so we can go ahead and see them live. As always guys, if you wanna continue to track these plays with me on a daily basis in real time, and see if I get into any of these trades, you can go ahead and join my Discord chat. There's gonna be a discount code down below, or if you just want to follow my Instagram, the Options Insider Instagram, I try to post there. I try to do recaps there and post any potential plays. Now, these won't be real time. You won't know exactly when I get into it, but it's a good way to follow on Instagram, see what I'm looking at. So if you want to check that out, that will be in the description as well. So if you've been enjoying these videos, if you've been enjoying the Sunday technical analysis, let me know by pressing that like button for me, subscribing to the channel for some more videos, and make sure to press the bell notification so you are alerted every single time that I post on the channel. All right, guys, so I got the charts pulled up. We're gonna go ahead and first look at the futures contracts. They just opened up at six o'clock Eastern time. You guys can see that it is currently trading. This is the one minute chart. So you guys will see, we did start with a little bit of a gap down here, but we're quickly recovering. This is the first one minute candle of the NASDAQ futures. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Obviously, we're gonna have to give it some time to sort of see how this trades over the overnight into tomorrow morning. Right now, it looks like the futures are opening up slightly down on the NASDAQ. And then if we go to the Dow, which is slash YM, we can see that we are trading down here on Dow futures as well. So Dow futures down about 61 points, NASDAQ futures down now about 40 points. And then we'll go to the SPY right now trading down about 10 points. So gap down to start the futures contracts. We'll see what happens. We can definitely make this back overnight. So if this continues, we may see more downside tomorrow. If we get some type of bounce overnight, maybe we can see some upside. So let's just go ahead and look at the daily charts here on the futures and not look at this one minute. So on the day, on the daily chart, on the one year, one day chart on the NASDAQ, you guys will see that we had a pretty nasty double top that happened this week. So we had that nice run up. We had this big fall here in, you know, beginning of, I think that was around this 19th of February is when this sorted, uh, started the fall, started to take a little bit hit. The treasury rates were increasing, bond market was getting a little crazy, and the tech stock started to give a little bit of a sell-off. So we started to sell off. We found some support here at the 100-day. You guys probably already know this if you've been watching the market. But what's pretty important is this double top that we formed here on the NASDAQ. So this, recent, uh, this previous resistance was resistance once again. And what we can see is we had some pretty nasty wicks here on the daily which definitely sort of signaled that there was some bearish movement. A lot of sellers stacked up at this previous top. And the NASDAQ has now moved back down to the 100-day moving average. As you guys can see, the green line is the 100-day. On Friday, we tested it once again, bounced off of it, and we will have to see tomorrow on Monday, do we hold that 100-day? Do we find support there? If not, if we fall through it once again, we definitely want to have these recent lows hold. If those recent uh, lows do not hold around here, around 12,300, around 12,350, it's not going to be an exact dollar amount. It's going to be sort of a range. We do have some previous support around that area uh, back in October and November. We do want to see this previous low hold. If it does not, maybe we have some more downside. But first of all, 100 day moving average, we are close to it here. So let's first go ahead and see if that holds. You guys will see also by this double top where we recently failed was also right at the 50 day moving average. So we failed that 50 day test. We started to turn back over and we are still in somewhat of a bullish, I would want to say, because we are potentially making a or a higher low. So if the if NASDAQ holds this 100 day moving average, that would be considered a higher low. If we break through the 50 day, maybe on a test this way, then you can say, OK, we had a higher low, we held the 100 day, and maybe we have some more upside. This could also be, some people like to see inverse head and shoulders. So this could potentially be an inverse head and shoulders. This would be your head, and these would be your two shoulders. And you can tell that this could potentially be an inverse head and shoulders. That is a bullish sign, a sort of a reversal sign. When a stock has an inverse head and shoulders, that could signal somewhat of a bottom. So potential. It is potential that we have the inverse head and shoulders here. I would not be surprised to see it. But of course, we can always have downside. We have to see if we hold that 100 day. If we do, 
and we sort of form this inverse head and shoulders, then maybe we see some upside. A lot of questions to be asked next week. A big watch is going to be on the treasury bond, on the bonds, on the treasury rates, the US 10 year, the, the five year rates. That has been really driving these tech stocks. Every time that those rates increase, you start to see some weakness on the tech stocks. So that's going to be important. The Fed, what they say next week is also going to be very important. So let's go ahead and see. It's not going to always just be technical analysis. We have to remember that, that even though the technicals can show some type of support here at the 100 day, if the bond rates start to increase again, we could easily fall under that. So that is, that's it for the NASDAQ. We'll go to the Dow here. And what we can see is the Dow has been outperforming. While the NASDAQ was falling, the Dow stocks were really getting pumped up because people were rotating money into those Dow stocks. So we had about seven, about seven straight green days, which was crazy to see. Pretty overextended over the 20 day moving average. Historically, you guys will see from this long trend that every time we get a little bit overextended past that 20 day, right here is an example, right here is an example. And every time we go past that 20 day a little bit too much, we start to want to trend back to it. So potentially the Dow, if we get tech rotation, if we get people buying tech once again, maybe you start to see the Dow fall back to the 20 day moving average. If it does, I think that's a great opportunity. So we definitely a little extended here on the Dow. Friday was a little bit weak here. Uh, you saw tech hold up better than the Dow on Friday. And I think people were starting to either take profits on those Dow stocks, take profits on you know this pretty overextended Dow and maybe move some money back into tech. That's just a potential theory. But we can see that the Dow is overextended. It's about, let's see, percentage wise, about a point and a half over the 20 day. So if we do get a retracement back to the 20 day, wouldn't be worried about it being a market sell off. It's just a healthy retracement back to a pretty strong support area. So let's keep an eye on that. All right, guys. So the first stock that we're going to go over is Penn National Gaming. You guys may know this is in the sports betting industry and it's been extremely hot. The whole industry has been extremely hot. I've made some nice money owning shares of both DraftKings and Penn. And I actually took an options trade that I alerted it in the Discord chat on Friday in Penn National. Now the reason that I took this swing trade was because back on the 15th of March, Penn, the news came out that it was going to be joining the S&P 500. You guys may remember the reaction that happened when Tesla joined the S&P 500, and we got a similar reaction Friday after hours when that news was announced. Not this Friday, but uh, last Friday. So we'll see what happens, but we saw that big spike up on that news, up to 142, all time high. And from that point, we sold off, I think it was about 20%. So 21% after that news was announced, the next you know four to five consecutive days were down 20%, right back to this 50-day moving average. I took this swing trade because I think Penn can hold this 50-day moving average. We had a nice green candle here on the daily. And on Monday, tomorrow, they are officially going to be added to the S&P. So maybe we get some bullish movement there due to that official joining of the S&P 500 and the recent 20% sell off on the stock back to this strong 50 day moving average. You can see the last time we moved back to the 50 day, we went ahead and moved right back higher into new highs. So I took a May contract, a pen. You guys can see it on the Instagram. If you guys follow that, I'll go ahead and, and uh, add that trade onto the Instagram account. But I have the current trade. I like Penn here, the 50 day moving average. I like the support. I like the sell off after that important news, 20% sell off, letting me know that maybe I'm getting a little bit of a discount here. And the last thing is some positivity around uh, sports betting for March Madness. So I may anticipate thinking to see that we'll see some type of headlines come out about an increased number of betting for March Madness. If we get that, maybe we get some hype here on Penn as well. DraftKings is not one of the ones we're going to review, but DraftKings has been extremely strong over the last few weeks, continued to go higher, and is now right at an all-time highs. So if you like the sports betting industry, DraftKings is a good one, but I don't like where it is right now to buy. It's right near all-time highs. I don't like buying near all-time highs, but Penn, on the other hand, has sold off 20% after this important news and I like the stock right here at the 50 day moving average. The next one we're gonna review again is Shopify. So Shopify is sitting at a really nice support area around $1,100 a share. We have this very, very strong support that's lasted for almost, uh, what is that? That is almost uh, five or six months that we've found some support, previous resistance that has turned into support here on Shopify at $1,100 a share. So we found that support, 
Right now we're holding it. Over the last about two weeks, we've been chopping around, just holding that 1100. The other thing that I'm seeing is we're starting to find this uptrend. So we are holding right now this uptrend here from back in November. So we're on this uptrend, we're at $1,100 support. So this could be a very crucial area for Shopify. And we are at the 100 day moving average. So we have three confluences here. We have $1,100 support, we have an uptrend that it's holding, and we have the 100 day moving average. So I, I definitely am keeping an eye on Shopify for a move back up, maybe until these highs right here. Right here is where I would expect to find some resistance around 1216, 1220, and then again, the 50 day moving average, which is right around 1230. So we definitely have upside on Shopify if it holds this support level, and those option contracts will be very lucrative if you get in them at the right time. So keep an eye on Shopify here. If the tech sector comes back, this would be on near the top of my list to watch for a potential bounce. So the next stock we're gonna check out is Square. Right now, Square is sitting right near its 100 day moving average. And we're also sitting at some previous support that I see here on the daily chart. So this range here, anywhere from around 200 to 210 has been extremely strong over the last few months. You can see we've bounced off of it multiple times. And right now we're sitting right at that 100 day moving average. The last time we hit the 100 day, we had a nice bounce of just about, let's take it from the 100 day, about a 17% bounce there. We are back at the 100 day moving average and I expect us to try to find some support here. Of course, Square is going to move with the NASDAQ. It's going to move with tech stocks. If the tech stocks get a bounce, I would definitely keep an eye out on Square because you are getting it near the 100 day moving average and that is usually an area of very strong support. So we have that previous support around 200 to 210 and we have that 100 day moving average. On Friday, it made a nice candle. It did get down to it, but closed pretty high, uh, a good amount higher than the 100 day, just about $4, $5 higher than that test. So we will see what, you know, what Monday brings. Does it bring some tech strength? Does it bring tech weakness? But I would keep an eye out on Square at this 100 day moving average. If we get that bounce, this will definitely move. So the fourth one is Ulta. Now I know you guys have heard a lot about Ulta either on the Discord chat or on the YouTube channel, but I still love this setup. So Ulta fell pretty large on earnings. It dipped down and has been holding this 50 day for quite a while. We're also holding a pretty strong uptrend here. So we have this uptrend that it's trying to hold and we have the 50 day moving average. If Ulta can break out of this range that it's been trading in, so right around around 325 and then your sort of your low of the range is right around 310 you want to call it so 310 to 325 a rough range here on the stock but if we can break above this 325 and break above this 20 day you have a lot of room here onto the upside about $20 a share which is right around 6 to 7% on Ulta and on option contracts that's a lot more so I like Ulta I like the the strength that it's been forming you guys know that I took this trade and I lost money on it because of the relative choppiness here over the last few days. But this, this setup is still here. There's still a big gap on the daily chart. And if you can catch it on the right timing, this could be a lucrative trade itself. So keep an eye on Ulta, watch for that 325 break and watch for that resistance at the 20 day moving average. Okay guys, so the last stock we're gonna go ahead and check out here is Snapchat. Snapchat has been a pretty strong performer since their earnings back in October of last year. So we had that strong earnings and since that gap up right here, we have not come back. Some may argue that eventually we're gonna try to fill this gap, potentially. I don't think we're gonna get back to $20, $29 a share on Snapchat, that would be a really big sell off. If the tech sector really sells off, that is possible. But just with the stock alone, if the market's sort of trading sideways or going higher, I don't think Snapchat's gonna fall even though the market is strong. So getting back to that gap could take a long time. I don't see it happening. So, so far I'm looking at this as very bullish. We're on a very bullish uptrend. Right now we are at the 50 day moving average. So if we do find some support across the social media stocks, across the tech stocks, Snapchat is a good candidate here off this 50 day moving average. One thing that I'm a little concerned of, which I wanna point out, is the head and shoulders here on, on this stock. So we have, a, we have a shoulder, we have the head, and we have the second shoulder and we have some weakness after that. So this could be the end of that second shoulder here, and that could be a pretty bearish uh, uh, reversal or confirmation. And we do have that pretty strong resistance at 65 multiple times. So here, the head came through it, and then right here at 65, found resistance once again. 
So potentially we bounce off the 50 day. If the market gets hot again, this could be a good play, but there are also potential that this head and shoulder holds. If the market falls lower, then we may see some more downside. The support that I'd like to see maybe back down here at 48, also around here at 54, you have this range that it was trading in for about, you know, a month and a half, two months. So potentially we get lower if the tech sector gets weak, but it's at a 50 day moving average. I like that support line. I like Snapchat overall. So keep an eye here on Snap. You're getting a sell off. You you know, you're not buying it near the highs. Right now you're about 20% off the highs. So there are definitely there is definitely some value here. Let's just go ahead and keep an eye on Snapchat. See if it holds this 50 day. If it does, I like it for some more upside on this very strong uptrend. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for the five stocks that I'm watching into next week. We have that Penn National 50 day moving average with the S&P 500 news. We have Shopify at the $1,100 support. We have Square sitting near the 100 day moving average. I'm going to continue to watch Ulta, even though I took a loser on that stock. I still like the setup. And we have Snapchat, a very strong name for this year, sitting at the 50-day moving average. Let's go ahead and see if it can hold. Of course, we'll have to watch the futures, see how they open tomorrow. We'll see if the NASDAQ can hold up, if the rates can continue to sort of slow down, not continue to raise those treasury rates, and see how the bond market reacts. We have a lot of news next week. We have the Fed talking once again. So there's going to be a lot of news coming out, a lot of volatility. And trying to trade these intraday moves can sometimes be extremely difficult. So make sure to be careful. Make sure to not put too much money on the line. Focus in on your risk management this coming week. There's still a lot of questions to be asked, a lot of questions to be answered. So we will see what happens. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to press that like button for me. Make sure to also subscribe to the channel for some more Sunday videos, as well as some Tuesday and Thursday uploads on some trades that I'm watching. And press the bell notification so you know every single time that I post. Hope you guys have a good rest of your weekend, wrapping up your Sunday night, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.